All right, this is Emily Dickinson's poem 632. Again, mostly known as the brain is wider than the sky. All right. Uh, the brain is wider than the sky, for put them side by side. The one the other will contain with ease and you beside. The brain is deeper than the sea, for hold them blue to blue. The one the other will absorb as sponges buckets do. The brain is just the weight of God, for heft them pound for pound. And they will differ is if they do a syllable from sound. All right, a simple, quick little uh, almost sounds like a limerick or something, right? To, um, going uh, the, going through there, there, um, and um, there are you know, but also gorgeously sort of architectured this poem um, and uh, subtle uh, in, in its design, but 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 very. Uh, specifically designed, I, I think. Um, and we start the first, you know, and, the, and the first two stanzas, uh, really all three. There's three stanzas, and they all kind of are playing, uh, foiling off and playing off one another. And uh, just uh, the, 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 it, it's almost like a jazz piece, right? Where they, where you got the main sort of, uh, which you have the the wider than the sky for bump, you know, have them side by side. There's the the declaration. And then the comparison, and then the, the um, and, and then the, the how they compare and contrast, contrast to one another, and boom, 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 all three times is like that. And but you do get a bit of a uh, a sort of surprise right there at the end as far as how it's going to turn out. And I'll let's, we'll start with a. I'll start with the first uh, stanza here. The brain is wider than the sky, for put them side by side. The one there, the other will contain uh, with ease and you beside. Again, Dickinson is the poet of consciousness itself, uh, really, and of uh, this this remarkable uh, facility of human beings to um, kind of uh, hold their worlds, you know, uh, uh, and 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 this sort of a uh, inexact but un kind of gorgeously rich simulacrum, you know, uh, in their brains that they can kind of uh, involuntarily, both voluntarily and involuntarily, kind of warp and change and shape and mold in all kinds of different ways. And is she ever playing with that all the time, and especially maybe uh, right here, right? And again, the brain is wide. Again, is the, you know, the brain the brain isn't even wider than our heads physically, right? <laughs> um, uh, so to say it's wider than the sky. Again, interesting that she used brain and not mind, right? Which would, which would be the right way to do that and she's always kind of doing those things whereas you know she's just a little a little off you know um she won't quite do it right uh refuses to uh, uh play along with 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 proper and expected uh english uh, for any of us and um but i think that it has uh, you know uh, the effect of adding uh, what's called uh, disfluency, I think, is uh, something they call in uh, pedagogical studies, where you're teaching something. Like, if you want to learn something, um, I, I, one, you know, if there's any students watching, well, at least some students are watching this, or they better be, um, and, and any others. That one of the best ways of learning something, right, is to uh, you know, kind of read your your chapter or whatever, and then sort of take your notes and then try to. Uh, I, 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 this really is handy. Stand like. I sort of am here right now in front of a webcam. Uh, you don't even have to record yourself. We're just to an empty room as long as, you know, one of your roommates don't think you're a mental patient or something. And uh, you, you speak, imagine you're giving, you're teaching what you just read to someone else and you speak it out. Um, and it's hard to do that. It's harder to you try it. It'll be a lot harder than you think. Uh, you'll have to, it'll take you a few tries. Uh, but by the time you really can speak it, out without looking at your notes, you've really uh, kind of mastered the material, and you you will almost certainly remember it on the the when you don't know, have a panic attack uh, the next day on the test. Um, it's something a little bit similar, I think Dickinson's doing when she in in a small way where she where she keeps doing these little things where she uses words a little bit wrong and doesn't and and, and, and makes the the grammatical and the, the syntactic structures a little bit off. Um, and again, even something as simple as using brain when she should have used properly mind. There. But again, saying it's wider than the sky, then you know, because the human imagination, well, it really is limitless, isn't it? And uh, that's quite a declaration, but I think it's probably a, a true one. And again, the, the, those to see Dickinson as being uh, dark, I, I just never quite get there. She, uh, she's, she's always so playful, and I think uh, a real kind of optimist in the human um, potential and and and. Uh, and, and, and and, and humanistic uh, capacity, I think. Um, 
And again, uh, for, put them side by side, the, the one the other will contain it with ease and use them aside. And again, physically, it's obviously it's the opposite of that that's true, right? No, it's the you know, sky that can continue, contain any number, you know, <laughs> limitless amount of brains, not any, you can't take that sky and actually squash it. Uh, but, you know, well, yeah, no, they, they, that it's also true, right? The human brain really can imagine that sky. We know, we don't just know. We know about the Big Bang. We know about, you know, uh, the, the, some of the stars we look at are actually, you know, they're, or, you know, takes that, that as fast as light travels, which is the fastest of, we know of anything, as far as I know. Um, and uh, some of those are already dead because the light, by the time the light got, uh, and we can imagine all the way out, uh, uh, to to there right and we've really mapped out you know maybe not much of but still a shockingly amount of uh the cosmos itself so we really can and, you know the human imagination especially the collective uh shared human imagination can uh, actually hold quite a bit and maybe more than the sky at least the one we're looking at um, second stanza: the, the brain is deeper than the sea for holding blue to blue. The other, the one, the other will absorb uh, as sponges buckets do. And again, just these always surprising you with these quirky, strange, wild, really flights of imagination with the, uh, of, of, this, of the figurative language and the metaphors uh, she, she'll use. Um, and again, uh, it's, so it's now we went from the sky and now we're going to the sea, right? Uh, kind of the, the logical counterpoint to the sky. And, um, and again, the one, you know, uh, it's, it's wider than, the, you know, or it's deeper, I'm sorry, than the sea. And again, the sea is the deepest thing we know of, really, I guess, right? Unless you count the depth, I guess if you went into the sky and count this. But I think when we think of depth, I don't know. I think it's the natural inclination to go down that up. Um, so again, you know, the, the, the sea, and, and at this point, really would have been unexplored depths. Uh, we know a little more about. The, I think we still have not completely uh, the, explored the very depths of the darkest, you know, uh, bottoms of, of, of some of our seas. Uh, but again, she's you know, no, the brain is even you know, much. Of course, the brain is much deeper. Than, and it's said in such a, a, a kind of a non with a, a remarkable nonchalance, really, in her part. Right, that uh, the brain is really much deeper uh, than the scene. Again, put them blue to blue, and what a, it's just, and boy, that I had never thought of that. You know, right? I mean, the, uh, to compare them uh, with the adjectival, you know, color of the thing is, is and, and turn those, uh, the the color in, you know, and make that into a noun is 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 is, is, is quite so. And yet we completely that, that that's not hard to figure out. We know what she she means by that. Um, but again, she's always getting you to look at things fresh and new. Um, and and. Uh, the one the other will absorb as sponges and buckets do it again. No, it's not the sea they can absorb. Which, by the way, you know, a, a lot of human beings have been buried out there, right? The, um, the, the, and you know, bury even burial at sea sometimes honorably, and and you know, shipwrecks and you know, a million other things. Um, but uh, no, it's no, it's the brain that absorbs it, you know, just like sponges and buckets do. All right, the last and this uh, probably the most startling stanza here. The brain is just the weight of God uh, for for heft and pound to pound, and they will differ if they do a syllable from sound. And that's is some boy, that is some trick uh, uh, there. And again, the brain is just the weight of God. I mean, what? to even do with that line um you know what does god weigh you know what's kind of what does smoke weigh right um and it's not you you cannot be literal and then try and get anything out of reading an emily dickinson poem obviously you, you do need to um just again imagining it's it's the the sort of little imaginative flight you need to take to consider that sentence that's that's doing all the work, right? Uh, imagining what God weighs like, and can we imagine such a thing? And what does that mean about us if we can imagine such, you know, what God weighs? Um, uh, there's a lot you're actually sort of a, sort of packed into that simple little phrase, um, the to to contemplate uh, the unimaginable. Uh, right and 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 with and the completely incomprehensible, um and to say it again then that nonchalance it's just the weight of God right like 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 it's an offhand and like of course you already know this right and she say again that is a very clever rhetorical trick she she's just almost subtly, um. You know, get, it's just if it's your natural inclination to kind of nod along with it, uh, right? So, uh, she has a way of getting you to lean in and agree with her uh, on top of everything else. Uh, and again, for heft them, 
uh, pound to pound, and now she actually has taken that weight and given it a physical component, and the physical component we use uh, for weights and measures, at least in our society, right, which is pounds itself, and so now it actually has a physical, we can feel a pound, right? Uh, so she's making you actually feel the weights of, of, of God. And then you get the, the, the ultimate sort of uh, the final uh, twist here. Um, and they will differ if they do. A syllable from sound. First, first of all, don't assume that the weight of God, you know, that our brain is any different than the weight of God. And now, like, there are some simple ways, um, I think, overly reductive ways. And, I, and again, I think Dickinson, trying to come up with an absolute way of interpreting a Dickinson poem is like trying to hold water in your hand, right? I mean, it just cannot be done. But um, they will differ if they do a syllable from that. And again, don't assume there is any difference uh, between the weight of God and our brain. Uh, right? And again, not God itself, his weight. <laughs> uh, right? Which is, again, just, well, what does that even really mean? Well, they, they, boy, they, they, they can sort of be, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to come up with anything here. I'm, 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 you hear me flailing. I, you know, it's it, the, the quality of God, maybe, uh, is our brain. And maybe just as uh, God is a concept, our brain is this sort of organ uh, through, you know, that, that, that creates this sort of little electrical storm, you know, that creates this sort of, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the the precipitation that becomes, you know, the, the fog that becomes uh, the God. And then, of course, you know, we, we come up with all the specific, uh, overly over-specified sort of interpretations of that. Um, but again, they will differ if they do a syllable from sound. And boy, that is something else. Um, and, um, and syllable from sound, you know, and, and again, what is the difference between a syllable and a sound? Whenever I ask this live, I, I usually get a, a bit of a long pause in my own undergrads. But I would say... You know, uh, you know, sound is the th is just that's the general, right? Uh, that's the sky or the ocean uh, or the god, without it being a god, a specific god, right? Um, that 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 that's the, the sound is just what we hear. Syllable is encoded sound. It is a piece of a larger symbol that means sound. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, it doesn't mean sound. And it is a sound. Symbol is also a sound, but a sound is not a symbol automatically right um and uh, the syllable um is a piece you know of, uh, of a word uh which is standing for something which often needs a lot of other words to really give it context and to give it meaning and it is the way we understand anything and it is the way um that's the foundational little um, adaptive trick our species has come up with to make us the apex predators and rule the planet like no other species has ever ruled this planet. And um, again, that tiny little powerful thing, that sort of unsplittable atom at the, at the center of uh, this thing. I mean, the reason we can rule everything is because we can believe in all these stories, you know, whether those stories be religious or, you know, the story of democ you know, what democracy, democracy is not a natural law. It's this thing we've, we've kind of come, come up with, right, to organizing principle for how, how best to live together. Um, or, you know, the, the law and order and, and, you know, human rights, all these things, right, that, that are uh, the great book Sapiens that came out some years about ago that I'm, I'm definitely informing some of what I'm saying here. And um, it is this sort of um, a, a flexible belief in particular stories and things um, uh, that has allowed us to pass down cultural knowledge and assimilate uh, I think, uh, 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 different ways of being and living together and working together and has, again, uh, uh, given us the, made us uh, the rulers uh, of this particular uh, sp spinning planet and space, and um, that the again the unsplittable uh, uh, sort of atom at the at, at the heart uh, of all of that would be the syllable itself, that one little piece of a word that becomes everything else, right? Um, and uh, you know that is why we're really maybe uh, our brain really isn't any different than God. All right, that's. Uh, Brain is wider by the, than the sky by uh, Emily Dickinson. Thanks.